Hey everyone, I'm Abha, I'm from Lawlex and we're going to be talking about sex education today. That's right, I'm not even giving an introduction, we're going straight into it. So why does Lawlex pick sex education as the first topic of its video series? I'll tell you why. Because the youth in India today is going through a huge identity crisis. Not just like a general identity crisis, who are we, what are we doing, what are we here for, not just that. We're going through a sexual identity crisis. Indian kids today, we're very mixed up about sex. I think that's fair to say. We don't really know how to break from these gender stereotypes and we're very confused about gender equality. So when the youth of a country is going through this kind of, you know, identity crisis, society tells us to look to our leaders. So let's look at our leaders. This is going to be quite fun. Let's look at what some of the foremost leaders of this nation have told us about sex. An Indian judge recently, this is quite a controversial case by the way, it happened very recently. An Indian judge during uh, you know, a case while giving his judgment said that peacocks don't have sex. That's right, peacocks don't mate. Newsflash, the pea hen drinks the tears of the peacock and that's how she gets pregnant. Another very interesting thing was said by this cabinet minister who was asked about, you know, why does rape happen? And he said, the consumption of fast food is what causes the urge to rape. What? An educational committee in the south of India was having one of its annual conferences and this lovely lady stood up and said that girls who return missed calls from boys on their phone are the ones who usually get raped. After the notorious uh, gang rape that took place in 2012 of a physiotherapy intern, one of the politician's reaction was, meh, boys are boys, accidents happen. Chappal, chappal se marungi. When asked about what can be done to prevent rape, one politician actually said, marry off the girls, that's how you prevent rape. So look to our leaders, look to our leaders, these guys, you want us to ask these guys about sex? So this is obviously not an answer for us. So who do we go to? Who do we ask our questions about sex? Let's try another source. What happens when we ask our parents about sex? Dad, where do babies come from? <coughs> ask your mom, beta. Ma. Where do babies come from? Huh? You learn to make chapatis first. Hmm. Do books offer the answer? He puts his arms around me and hauls me against his body. One hand remains in my hair, the other travels down my spine to my waist and down to my behind. Hmm. His hand flexes over my backside and squeezes gently. He holds me against his hips and I feel his... That's it. Do movies give us an answer about sex? So who do we finally look to when we want to ask our questions about sex? Conventionally, the answer is a comprehensive school education. Our schools are under a mandate to fulfill every child's right to education. So, naturally, sex ed should be a part of that education. Because should school education be limited to a deeper understanding of arithmetic? Does arithmetic actually help us in sex? So how big are you exactly? These are the circumstances in which an Indian child grows up. So it's no wonder that we don't have a clue when it comes to sex. In fact, how many of you actually know that education is a legal right? Yeah, under Article 45 and Article 21A of the Indian Constitution, education is a guaranteed fundamental right of every child. So obviously, sex education is a guaranteed right of every child. So you have a right to sex ed. 
There, I told you something you didn't know. The health ministry, in fact, very recently put together a manual which was about sex education. It's been working with the UN Population Planning Fund and they have you know, put in a lot of resources to come up with this manual on sex education, which is not in circulation yet. But our politicians don't want sex to be a part of sex education. So I'm confused. What are we going to be doing in the sex ed class? A question that is very often asked about sex education is, what should sex ed classes be teaching us? I'm glad you asked that. Firstly, it should be telling us about sex. How it happens, what goes where, what does it feel like, you know, those basic questions that every person has. The other thing that sex education should be teaching us is gender sensitization and gender-based stereotypes. This helps cultivate a better understanding, mutual respect and good relationships between the different genders in our society. Another thing that sex ed should be teaching us is contraception and reproductive health. See, there are very different way, ways of birth control and, you know, there are a lot of health risks and reproductive risks that are associated with sex, which you may not know about. The other thing that a sex ed class can talk about is masturbation, how normal it is, how healthy it is. It can talk about love and relationships, how it's absolutely normal to want a relationship with someone, the do's and don'ts of that relationship. And lastly, one thing that sex ed class should absolutely teach is consent, respect and choice. So obviously, a sex ed class would be very, very interesting, right? But what are the advantages of a sex ed class? If you're thinking that, then I'm glad you are, because there are, you know, a ton of advantages to a sex ed class. Firstly, sex education and sexual awareness is one of the most effective ways of preventing rape, sexual assault and sexual violence. It's also a very good way of population control, which we are in dire need of. Another thing is that it can answer common queries associated with sex and also common myths attached to sex. So busting myths is really, really important. You don't get pregnant the first time you have sex. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> it also guarantees sexual health of young teens and, you know, young adults and people who are having sex. And lastly, which I think is the most essential, it also helps us prevent sexual abuse of kids. So it's a win-win situation, guys. Why hasn't this caught up as a trend yet? If you're in school or if you're in college right now and you think that the education, situ uh, the education institution that you're studying in is being incredibly negligent when it comes to sex ed, you have the right to approach the faculty you know, be it the principal, your teachers, and ask them to organize a sex ed class. In fact, if they don't want to do it, they can call in social workers from a close by NGO and they can conduct the sex ed class. It can start from as young as class 5 kids to class 12 kids. In fact, uh, very recently, the chairman of the, you know, Central, Central Board for Secondary Education said that he is committed to providing adolescent awareness programs from the new academic year. So you have the backing of the chairman of CBSC and you're well within your right to ask for a sex ed class. You can do something about it and you can take action. Oh, of course, you know, there's the other option. You could get pregnant with uh, peacock tears. It's your choice.